Here I'm going to show you a cool visualization technique where you can use uh, the ranking function rank x to determine the size of or what you show inside of, inside of visualization. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at our customer sales. So if I just create a table out of this and uh, visualization will turn it into a uh, stacked um, bar chart. So what, we, what I want to do is I actually want to say um, now, uh, through a selection, say, well, if, if the top, if I only want to see the top three clients by ranking, that this visualization will only show those top three. But then, if I want to drop, uh, change to top ten, then uh, then this visualization will dynamically change. So we're going to run through the techniques you have to utilize to make that happen. Now, the first thing that we need to do in this case is we need to create a supporting table which enables uh, us to, uh, that will harvest or capture the selection that we're making. And we can do this very easily, very easily. So I'm going to create a new table um, by going into data there. And I'm going to go um, ranking selection. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put rank in here. And then I'm going to put 3, 5, 10, 15, and 20. So a really simple table. I'm going to load that in and remember this is just a supporting table has no relationship to anything so it's always good to just double check in your model that it doesn't relate and it doesn't so it can just sit out the side here now we need to somehow capture the selection because obviously we're going to bring it in here and we're going to change this into a slicer so I'll change it into a list now we want to capture we want to capture the selection we make here so that we can then feed it into our um, our visualization. So what we need to do is we need to use a very similar pattern that you may have seen before and I'm going to call it just rank select and I'm going to go if has one value the rank so if, if one value is selected then equal to that value by going values rank and then if, it, if nothing is selected I'm just going to make it 50 because I know that that's how many clients I have but you could make this much larger you could make it you could make it 1000 if you had a lot of customers like so and then if I bring that in here you'll see that this actually now returns a result based on the selection that we make so if, if uh, nothing is selected it brings a thousand uh, and, and, and as we select uh, some of the other amounts we uh, then get that amount there. Now we're going to feed this measure now. We're going to feed this into our calculation to create this dynamic visualization. So first of all, we need to work out well, what's the customer rank. So how do we do that? We use rank X. So I'm going to call this customer ranking and I'm going to go rank X. And first of all, I need to name a table here. Now the, the trick with rank X is you've got to, you want to go all customer or all customer names because uh, you want to have a look at uh, the entire table and um, not be filtered in its current context and that will make sense in a second. Now the expression is total sales because we're going to rank by sales. We don't need a value in this case and then we're going to rank in descending order. Now if I drag customer ranking in there you will see when we change the order that the highest selling customer is now ranked uh, ranked at number one. Now I've mentioned this a couple other times in, in some other videos, but if you do not go all here, everything will calculate to one, and that's because everything is filtered on this. This this customer is filtered in it, uh, it in its table in in behind in the data model, and if there's only one customer, then that customer is always going to be ranked the highest, and it's the same for every single uh, row in this table. So what you have to do is you have to take the um, or remove the filter context from that table and then you can then get the customer ranking um, for all of those customers. Okay, so now we've got a customer ranking. We can then now go sales by, uh, by, by customers. And now we just need to write some logic to incorporate uh, those two measures that we've done. So I'm just going to go if the customer ranking is less than or equal to the rank select so rank select if it's less than or equal to rank select then what we want to do is we want to make it total sales and if it if not then we just want to go blank now what blank is going to do is it's going to uh, return nothing so it's going to return nothing if it's under this under this number so if I drag this into the table you'll see what happens here it's cool, right? So it's only returning the top 10 now, and this is dynamic. So if I go 15, it's going to return 15. If I go 20, and if I go none, it's going to return everyone. 
And now we can turn this into a visualization. So I'm gonna just get rid of all those uh, intermediary calculations. And now we've got our visualization and we can say add some data labels and check this out. So we've got, now we've got, we're only looking in the top three clients, but say we, we're in a meeting and we wanna say, well, actually, well, let's compare our top 10 clients. All we've got to do is now select the slicer and our visualization automatically changes. So these are some of the great visualization uh, options that you have, especially when you bring in this, these supporting tables and, uh, and use that logic, use this harvested uh, calculation or measure inside some logic uh, and then you are able to create visualizations like this. So hope, hope you can incorporate this in some of your own analysis. Good luck with it. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.